he said, Lamont, it was her. It was my mama. Was a, she was a funny woman, she was a phenomenal woman, and she was a family woman. Like I said, she got most of her joy from being around me and my brother and the grandkids and cooking, and food is what really brought our families together. She was very traditional Korean mother. Um, she was big on education uh, for her children, for her grandchildren. She was big on being respectful, um, and at the same time, she was very direct. You know, she didn't sugarcoat a lot of things, but a very strong Korean cultured woman is what, how I remember my mother. Well, my mother was selfless, right? She, it was about others. It was less about her. She always tell you she'd be okay. Don't worry about me. Uh, she didn't ask or need for much. She didn't have much either, but she gave all that she did have. You know, some of my best moments is, um, yeah, my brother recently taught her how to play poker. And uh, some of our best moments is my mom would bluff every single hand. <laughs> and you can't tell if she's really bluffing or if she really has a hand because every hand she's willing to go all in. Right. And um, so those were some funny moments we had um, because we couldn't beat her. She would, she would somehow come she out and win, win and, and we didn't understand right. that. Um, <laughs> she couldn't play, but she would she win. Couldn't she couldn't play. Every hand was a... Biggest <laughs> guts and she would win. She did. She, she would even give us each $20 to put into the pot, but it'd all be her $20 and then she'll still win and then end up giving it to my niece anyway. I spoke to my father yesterday and he, he said I'm from day one when they met, that's all she wanted to do was work. She was a hard worker. She wasn't a person that wanted anything given to her or her kids. She wanted us to work for everything too and for it to be taken away like this and all she wanted to do was work. She wasn't at work because she had to be at work. She wanted to work because that kind of drove her. As soon as the news posted about the spa shooting, we're a day ahead in Japan. So I was getting ready to go to work. I was sitting in the parking lot and it had to be about 7.30 a.m. Wednesday uh, for me, which would have been 6.30 p.m. here Tuesday night. As a courtesy, I texted my mother, hey mom, I just heard about this shooting. Are you okay? About 15 minutes goes by, I don't get a response. And then I call her and she didn't pick up. And when she didn't pick up, I had that feeling. So I immediately contacted my brother and said, hey, you need to go check on mom. So I didn't know where she worked at, per se. So, um, but he texted me and he was like, go check on her. And so while I was home, I, that's what I was doing. I was calling Cherokee County, the, the police, and trying to find out did they identify these victims. And at that point, they had not. And so throughout the day, then Cherokee County called me back and said that it was not. Um, her, but they said that that's different from the Atlanta shootings. And uh, so I needed to contact the Atlanta PD and I was doing that. And uh, they had not yet identified the bodies, but I think at that point they had released that the four women were Korean women. I called the medical examiner and that's when she told me that they have somebody down there with uh, my mother's name and birthday. And I think at that same moment, my brother was calling to check on me and to see if I heard anything. And it was, I had literally just found out and he was calling. And he tells me he remembers what I said. And yeah. that it's gonna play in his head forever, you know? Yeah. He said, Lamont, it was her. It was my mama. We want justice, we, we want him held accountable for his actions. 
Um, we don't know much about him, um, so I can't really say much about that. But of course, I want him held accountable for his actions of of, of the damage he's caused these eight families. T today, I was sitting at the table, and um, I did have some questions for him. Um, I wanted to know when he was walking into my mother's spa, was she smiling at him? Was she ready to welcome him? I do want to know what my mom's expression was towards him, because she had no clue. Yeah, see, I'm, I don't have any questions for him. Nothing he could say would change it or would, would, would help me feel any better. I don't believe anything he would say to me. Um, I believe whoever was there, he was going to do whatever it was he had planned to do. And, uh, and I am a little different from my brother, so I'm tired of replaying that image in my head. I don't want to see that. And that, they describe what happened, but I can't get that image out of my head, so that's bothering me. Well, some people ask, am I black and Korean? I'm black and Korean, right? I have an African-American father and a Korean mother. And my mother was very adamant about knowing both, right? I didn't have to do one exclusively without the other. Um, one was not more valuable than the other. Again, she was very much conscious of what I looked like aesthetically on the outside, um, what me and my brother looked like. Again, um, African-American presenting. She also recognized we grew up in America and, and discrimination against Asians and African-Americans is a part of the American fabric, right? So this is not new. Um, my mother, she know we faced it. We faced discrimination on both sides growing up. You know, um, there have been some, some people we were around that didn't like her Asian culture or her Asian children. And then at the same time, there were other groups that didn't like the brown color of the skin, uh, black culture of us. But my mom was always an advocate of treating people right. Always not letting us know not to be embarrassed of who we were. Um, always ready to stand up and speak about discrimination if she saw you actively discriminating. Now you can see how great my mother was. Yeah. You sure can.